Welcome to this extended atmospheric wildflowers tutorial. This tutorial is a great example of the type of tutorials that you can get access to on my Patreon membership. Details about the membership can be found in the description below. So shall we get started? Here are the materials I will be using. I'm using my masking pen. I've got four watercolors, artist watercolors from Winsor & Newton, Ultramarine, Quinacridone Gold, Cadmium Yellow and Opera Rose. You can use any brand of watercolour. If you don't have Ultramarine, you can use Cobalt Blue. If you don't have any Cadmium Yellow, you can use Cadmium Yellow Pale or Lemon Yellow. If you don't have Quinacridone Gold, you can use Yellow Ochre or Raw Sienna. And if you don't have Opera Rose, you can use Permanent Rose or Alizarin Crimson. I hope this is helpful. I'm using Winsor & Newton Artist Gummed Block Pad 10 by 14 and it's got a rough surface and I'm using my black velvet brushes a size 14 and size 4 with my palette. What I'm doing now is I'm masking out the main flowers wet on dry with my masking pen. You can use masking fluid from a pot as well and then allow your masking fluid to dry naturally. As you can see on the right there, I've mixed up a quinacridone wash, a cadmium yellow wash, an opera rose wash, and a cadmium yellow plus a touch of ultramarine wash, quite watery puddles for my very first washes I'm gonna put on this paper with my size 14 black velvet brush. As you can see here, I'm really giving it a good soak so the water really absorbs into the paper and that'll give me more time once I start putting these washes on. But if you find that your background or your washes are drying out, your paper's drying out, just give it a little spray with a spritzer bottle and that'll keep it nice and damp. You can see I'm starting with my lightest wash first, that's the cadmium yellow, and I'm just putting this lightly onto this wet background, wet in wet, and at the top there, I've just diluted that yellow a little bit more because it's the background, I want it to fade away so it creates depth and distance in my painting. I've given my brush a good rinse there because I'm swapping to the pink, and I just want to put these pink marks in, wet into wet, so they can look like distant flowers, like blurry photographs sort of things, where it creates a really nice effect. And it's so nice because watercolour allows you to do this with wet on wet techniques. It creates lovely, soft, fuzzy edges. It's so funny watching this back a little bit. It looks like I'm conducting an orchestra the way I'm painting. And this is in real time. So I do actually paint a little fast, but um, I hope you get that sort of feeling of the energy that I'm putting into this. And I find this sort of stage of a watercolor painting, a lovely stage of just setting the scene as it were for this lovely background for these wild flowers. I'm just gonna slow the film down now to make it easier for you to watch this demonstration. I'm putting in the quinacridone gold now and I'm always getting fresh paint. As you see, I do a couple of strokes and reload my brush. And that way I get more control over the consistency of paint on the watercolor paper because it doesn't dry out too quickly because I'm constantly putting fresh paint on. And also you don't get as many back runs because the consistency stays the same. Just to let you know that back runs are created when you put a wet wash into a damp wash. As you can see here now, I've mixed up some of the pink with a touch of blue and I'm putting in these sort of more purpley shade flowers, damp into wet into the background. So it's slightly creamier and I'm just putting them in there damp into wet as I say, just make sure you keep getting fresh paint, especially when you're painting over a yellowy area, otherwise the paint will end up looking a bit brown. see here I'm using the quinacridone gold and the ultramarine to paint some of these foreground grasses with my size 14 brush so I'm really heavily loading it with this lovely mid green paint and painting it damp into wet so the paint's slightly creamier than the surface of the painting and I'm just using I mean this brush carries so much paint it allows me just to keep on painting so I'm just using the creamy cadmium yellow here with the 
ultramarine and if you notice in the middle ground my marks are slightly smaller to give the illusion of depth in your painting. My brush a really good rinse there because I want to mix up some pink with the yellow and I'm just painting this lovely light orangey colour in the background just to kind of really kind of just make it look like other wildflowers, really mix up those colours. It's amazing the different variety of colours you can get with the three primaries that I'm using, the cadmium yellow, the ultramarine and the opera rose with the quinacridone gold just to give it a little bit more oomph. But it's quite nice because it really does give you control over this colour mixing. So I'm putting this little bit of orangey green here and there and it gives that lovely soft glow. So I'm adding a bit of pink to that sort of lavender violet colour and painting that on just sort of damp into damp now just to get a variety of rusty sort of colours almost in the background. I've added a little bit more blue now. So the so your brush really you want it to be sort of creamier paint now so you don't get backgrounds because the background now is more damp than wet. I'm now painting the ultramarine blue with the quinacridone gold, some darker grasses in the foreground just to give it that little bit more depth again. So you put your darker tones in the foreground, the softer ones in the distance, again creating depth in your painting. just finishing off really this foreground just building up these marks and I'm just use a little bit of dark round that wildflower to the left there just because these are my main sort of foreground wild flowers and I want to bring those out especially the white flowers otherwise if it's a very pale background and you take off the masking fluid there is no contrast and there would be no point putting the masking fluid on if that were the case so I, I'm just you know it, it sort of seems like a lot really but we're only going to really paint this background once except for a few marks in the background wet on dry later so I really want to get the most out of it so remember we started off wet in wet then damp into wet and now it's damp into damp with the darkest darks I'm still using the size 14 black velvet brush I mean it really does hold so much paint and it has such a beautiful point I'm using this, I'm just flicking my wrist and really getting these lovely grasses in there, just having a lot of fun as well at the same time. And you can vary your colours, put a little bit more quinacridone gold in, touch more ultramarine, so you've got these different shades of grasses as well. As you saw there, I'm just applying a sprinkle of sea salt on the surface of my damp painting. You don't want your painting too wet because the salt doesn't work as well. So it has to be damp. If it's too dry, it won't work either. As you can see, I've sort of spread it out evenly and I want that salt to absorb the paint, get a wonderful texture and almost like little white flowers. You can also use table salt as well. I'm using the end of my tube of paint instead of the plastic card in this instance if you don't have one and I'm just lifting off the damp paint you have to do this quite swiftly in order to remove the paint again allow your painting to dry naturally as you can see here the salt has dry then you can just brush it off with kitchen towel once the salt's removed, you can then remove your masking fluid and I'm using my framing tape or you can use masking tape and I'm just going to use this now just to pull off the masking fluid. Don't scrunch the tape up, use it flat on the paper and just sort of rub it off gently. You can also use your thumb or a putty rubber or another sort of rubber, whatever works best for you. Do make sure your painting is thoroughly dry because you might tear the paper or smudge the paint. Another reason I like using the tape is because it comes off on the tape and there's less mess so that's another bonus for using framing tape or masking tape. I'm actually now going to lift off some wildflowers with my stencil brush. So I've dipped it into some water and I'm just scrubbing now and lifting off and using my kitchen towel to really just lift off any excess paint. So it's quite wet and I'm just going in a circular motion, just working that paint off the watercolour paper because it isn't permanent and they're not too staining these colours except obviously for the opera rose. And as you can see there, I've got a nice sort of glow. So it actually makes these look fuzzy like they're in the background and a little bit like the photograph. 
You can use any brush for this, but the stencil brush, because of its hard bristles, really works that paint off. doing I'm using a stencil brush to soften the edges where I use masking fluid a lot of the times masking fluid leaves this very sharp edge and I didn't want it all the way around the outside I wanted it to sort of melt into the background a bit so I've just softened a little bit around the right hand side and underneath and just left the top left hand side with the sharper edge Make sure you keep washing your brush using clean water, otherwise that all your wildflowers will end up yellow or a muddy green colour. And it's a good time now to allow your painting to dry. I'm going to mix up some ultramarine now and a little bit of the opera rose. And it's a milky wash. I'm wetting these main flowers now and I'm going to paint this wet in wet. As you can see, I'm just loading my brush. I'm using the size four round brush and I'm just dropping in this colour and dropping in water so you get some nice effects and I'm varying the colours that I'm using a bluey violet, a violet and a pinky violet as you can see from the photograph there's lots of shades in this flower so I'm just dropping this in trying to emulate that as best I can see I rinse my brush there and as I take the brush away I always wipe off the excess water on the side of the pot it's just to ensure that my brush isn't too wet especially when I put it in to get fresh paint I'm now mixing up the opera rose with the quinacridone gold and I'm just putting in that color just below the flowers there where it's reaching the stem just that lovely rich pinky warm pinky orangey color I'm dropping in a little bit of green, that's the quinacridone gold and the ultramarine, just to mix it up because there's some really interesting colours at the bottom there. But just do your best, just play around with these colours, don't be afraid of them. You know, for the main part, the, the top of the flower is the ultramarine, the opera rose, and at the bottom it's the pink, it's the quinacridone gold, a little bit of touch of blue in there. I'm painting the stem with the ultramarine and you could use the cadmium yellow or the um, quinacridone gold, whatever you fancy. You can just let yourself go and have a little bit of fun with the colour mixing. Great, when you get to this stage in a painting, you'll have lots of different washes on your palette. And in this instance, I want to get a bit of a greyish green to um, paint for the shading and the marks on the flowers and in the foreground. So I'm mixing up a mixture of the ultramarine and a little bit of the quinacridone gold or the yellow that I already had on my palette and just sort of working out what sort of colours, yellowy greens, greens etc just to create that texture at the bottom. Try to keep the top of the flowers nice and light avoiding any marks and keeping the shading underneath. You can continue with this and paint in the stems also using the ultramarine and the yellows wet on dry. You can also add a little bit of the pink and the yellow together to make an orangey colour. Mixing that with the blue creates quite a nice neutral colour. You can get so many different shades just using these four colours in different sort of quantities.
As you can see there, I put a little bit of dark on and I've got my damp brush and I'm just pushing that wet brush down into that dark paint so you create a little bit of blending. So you've got the light at the top, the very sort of soft tone in the middle and then the darker bit at the bottom. I'm just painting in a little stem now, very thin stem with this size four round brush, wet on dry. What I like about this reference photograph is you've got this texture and detail in the foreground and it's all fuzzy in the background and it's brilliant for this sort of painting because you can actually create depth. So that's a really useful thing. So I'm actually with these um, little flowers in the foreground, I'm actually putting on little bits of texture and giving it a little bit more detail than the ones in the middle ground and then the actual background. I'm going to continue painting these purpley pinky flowers, wet on wet, varying the washes, the ultramarine and the pink, so you get these lovely different shades as I did earlier. So I'm adding a little bit of pink now to my wash, my milky wash, and I'm just painting in some of these smaller wildflowers here and there, painting them wet on dry. I'm actually going to add a little bit of the yellow or the quinacridone gold to this colour for the stem. And what I tend to do is I start the stem at the top, gradually sort of lift the brush off so there's not much paint in the bottom of the stem so it sort of disappears into the wildflowers. For the foreground flowers, I paint the stems fully in, bringing them right down to the bottom. The watercolour painting has dried now and I'm painting wet on dry my next darker stage, putting in some more darks and details, especially at the bottom of these wild flowers, using my size 4 brush, mainly using the ultramarine with the quinacridone gold. So it's a good time again to allow your painting to dry. So I'm painting now on top of this main purple flower, wet on dry, just putting in a little bit of tonal values just to bring it out and bring it forward from the background. I'm using the size four round brush just to almost draw in the shapes of the petals and then using some water just to soften it and blend as I go. I'm not trying to paint these flowers photographically, I'm more so giving an impression, a feel of them, a quite a loose study of them. As you can see, I'm varying the colours again. I'm using a little bit more blue in places, a touch more of the pink in there, and then a very pinky shade. And as you can see from the photograph, you've got these beautiful colours in here. At the bottom, it's a little bit more pinky, to, towards the stem end and I'm using the pink and some quinacridone gold. I'm using the quinacridone gold and the ultramarine to make these dark stems and it really pulls it away from the background and really brings this flower forward so it's almost like the star of the show creating lots of depth. I'm using this same technique on the supporting cast, the smaller flowers, the ones that are a little bit further 
back, um, wet on dry and then blending with clean water here and there. Just putting some darks at the bottom of the white flowers now as well, wet on dry, just putting a few little marks just to kind of bring them forward and just the final darks and details to finish them off nicely. I'm just going to put a few dark grasses in the foreground with the quinacridone gold with a touch of ultramarine, touch of pink, just varying the colours. There's lots of warm grass colours in this, in this photograph, which I really like, instead of just your straightforward greens. So I'm just painting them in, sort of pressing the brush down, lifting it up so you get that lovely sort of grass-like effect. Don't overdo this. Kind of work from mid-tone and then your darker shades. So you can see here, I'm mixing up the quinacridone gold with the ultramarine, just putting a few of these dark marks in. Try to vary the angles of your grasses as well. You know, you go up, but you go sideways. So it's swaying almost, and it creates a little bit more interest. I'm actually using the pink, the quinacridone gold, and the ultramarine to make my ultimate dark, as it were. Just those few little dark accents here and there, really pull it forward, create depth and interest. Going to use some Winsor and Newton white gouache. You could use white watercolour paint. It's not as opaque, so you might need to do a couple of layers. But I'm going to use this for the background white wildflowers. I'm painting the white wet on dry. Then I'm diluting my brush and just softening the edges. So a bit like what we did with the scrubbing earlier. I just want a fuzzy, soft edge. So put as many of those on as you like. If you like your background already, you don't need to put these on. I just wanted a little bit more sort of soft interest in in the background a little tip here is if you've got some good salt effect that actually looks like white wildflowers try to avoid painting over those but just in spaces where you think it needs a bit more interest and while it's damp I've just dropped a tiny bit of my violet in there just at the bottom just to create a little bit of shading so they're not like just like little white circles there's a little bit of detail and you can put some stems in as well using a dilute pale green and there I decided to take out that sort of central white flower there because I just felt it was just too much so I wet it and then I lift it off with my kitchen towel. I'm just spattering with the white paint just to create a little bit more interest in the background. I always feel it adds a little bit of sparkle just towards the end of the painting. So to finish off, I'm just putting a few darks and details on the star of my show. It was crying out for a little bit more attention as stars do. So just a few little dark accents on there just to finish off. So I'm just removing my framing tape now to reveal this beautiful white border. And it gives me time to assess to see if I need to do anything more to the painting but I think I'll leave it there for now. I really hope you enjoy this extended tutorial and that it gives you an idea of the type of tutorials that are available on my Patreon membership. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you will get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you want to learn even more about watercolour, get access to exclusive content and downloadable outline sketches. Why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below and you can cancel the membership anytime. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.